finally time to make some serious progress on getting this, the new motor, into the 300. By the way, I'm going to call it the 300 from now on. Z300 SEV is a bit too long. So this is the rear motor out of the Mitsubishi Outlander FEV. Significantly chunkier in terms of copper and magnets than the one I've got in there at the moment, which is very much underpowered. Perfectly serviceable, but doesn't give the performance I would like. And actually I think is hurting my efficiency as well because the inverter is having to work so hard um, to get it to deliver the torque that I need. So I've been mucking around on CAD for a long time with this. Now I don't have access to a 3D scanner yet, only a camera, a tape measure. I don't even have an iPhone with that nice um, sort of AR kit on it. So I've been working with a ruler, paper, uh, doing MDF versions of the template, trying to make sure I've got all the um, spacing right for these holes. And it's finding time now to transfer those holes onto a piece of steel. Um, this is a sheet of six mil plate that I've had cut at my local steel stockholders. This is an A3 printout of the bolt pattern of this motor, which should sit over here just like that. And so I'm gonna transfer this piece of paper onto this piece of steel. I'm going to start drilling out. I won't be able to do the centre hole on here because I don't think I've quite got the uh, uh, the range um, from here to the drilling centre. Um, but all of the others I'll be able to use the pillar drill for to get them nice and straight. Um, and yeah, with a bit of luck by the end of today, I'll have the first part of the adapter plate for this motor ready to go. Still lots of other things to do in order to get it in the car. I don't yet have a plug for the resolver, wherever the resolver connection's gone uh, on here. I'll obviously need some more pipe to hook up the cooling. This one's water cooled. My current motor is uh, oil cooled. Um, I'll probably have to tweak my wiring run um, from the inverter down to here and probably have to 3D print something here as well to um, seal the um, high voltage connections, the three high voltage phase connections uh, into here. But this is an important step. Uh, obviously you've got to make a coupler as well, um, but this is an important step in getting things moving. So on with drilling. Well, actually, first of all, on with gluing. Got the template glued down nice and flat to this sheet of steel, plate of steel. You'll notice there's a lot of excess around the edges. I actually ordered this quite some time ago um, when I was planning a slightly different version uh, of this adapter plate. I thought it was going to need to be um, bigger. Um, but I've come to realise that actually I can save a load of weight um, by cutting this down quite a lot. What there is is going to be some, plenty of excess on each side because this is probably where the... Um, it's going to bolt up to the mounts, so you'll have some beams or bars come off here or here, uh, which go off to the um, existing engine mounts and also provide the base for the mounting frame for the inverter, um, which will sit on top of the, the motor. So just to flesh this out, if you've not seen one of these before, this plate will bolt to the motor, then bolts will go um, through from the other side, most of the bolts go through and into the motor, into threaded holes in the motor. There'll be another plate like this, which bolts up to the bell housing of the gearbox, the five-speed manual transmission from the Z3. And then in between the two, I'm going to put a box of 40 mil steel here um, that I'll cut an angle, it just that fits around this circle. And then through the hole will go a coupler which sits on the um, spline shaft of the motor and sits on the spline shaft of the gearbox uh, and one drives the other. This is a very agricultural way of doing things. Really I'm doing it this way to prove that I've got this spacing right, to prove that the motor is better than the other one. What I don't want to do is invest in getting something nicely machined out of aluminium uh, and either A, have the bolt pattern wrong and have to modify a nice CNC cut and very expensive piece, and B, go through all of this rigmarole to find out that the new motor's no better than the old one. 
because um, I've not really tested that yet, certainly not with the, uh, with the Prius inverter. So going down the agricultural route for now, yes, I know this could be lighter. I'm sure there's a thousand ways this could, design could be improved, but it works. It works on my existing car. This is a refinement of what's on my existing car. I've got eight mil steel plates on there. I massively over-engineered it. Um, this one's come down to six mil. So it should be plenty strong enough, should be plenty of space, however I end up mounting things. There's some stuff I can do on CAD in here, but some stuff I'm basically, I'll do as I go along as I did last time around, um, and sort of, um, yeah, a bit of cardboard aided design, a bit of design in situ. So time to get the punch. I've got a nice new automatic punch for Christmas. Um, go around, punch all these holes. I think actually with the paper lined up here, I might just about be able to get the big hole saw um, onto the, uh, uh, onto the pillar drill um, and in place we shall see um, which will make things a little bit easier um, and yeah punch and drill So, because I moved into the garage the other day, uh, I took all my oil with me. <laughs> so this is uh, olive oil, or sunflower oil actually, um, that I'm using for lubrication. Not ideal, but it's what I've got. Right, quite pleased with these holes. They seem to have come out quite centered. There's always gonna be some error. You know, I'm doing this manually. I'm not a professional machinist. Lining up those holes, even with a punch, everything else is rarely perfect unless you're doing it CNC. But you know, so far so good, reasonably happy. Unfortunately, I can't get the, um, I might be able to get it on that one but I can't get the drill press on these two. So I have to do these two by hand and this big beast here by hand. Can't remember if I've shown this before. Uh, this was a tip I got off watching the Post-Apocalyptic Inventors channel. Highly recommended if you haven't seen it. Um, he used these adapters you can buy off AliExpress to convert an old power tool with an obsolete and dead battery to use Makita or actually there are adapters for other ones as well but to use Makita um, LXT 18 volt batteries um, so the balance is slightly off on this drill as a result um, but it does make an old tired thing very useful again so I can now have one for the work this one will probably go into the workshop um, because I'll be using mostly my Makita power tools up there and I can leave my nice Bosch drill at home so that if I do need to put shelves up etc I've got something here for that as well. So that's the holes drilled now for all the bolts and for the um, little lug. I have very little doubt that I'll have to open up at least one of these slightly. But you know, half a millimeter when it's going to be clamped in tight. As long as it's as long as the uh, the other plate is fitted to it. Once this is fixed in a position from which it's not going to move. It's not the end of the world if I have to open one of these up slightly.
because the two plates will be able to shift against each other until they're welded together. So the final alignment of this plate and the gearbox plate will be determined by the coupler. Once the coupler's on the motor, the coupler's on the gearbox, they're all sat there in this big sandwich. Only then, when I've got it perfectly aligned, completely clamped up, will I actually weld, will do the final welds between this plate, the gearbox plate, and the box section that's gonna sit here around it. So, we've just gotta avoid the possibility of this moving um, certainly moving so that the coupler is out of alignment once it's all together. But fingers crossed, you never know, it may fit perfectly. We shall see. Before that though, hole saw time. Might just open this hole up a little bit first. Okay, I need some air defenders. And then we have it, one hole. Right, time to clean this up a little bit and then the scary bit, test it. I don't know how well you can see this, but I've just used the step drill to deburr these. Actually put a little bit of a chamfer on, a bit too much actually in some cases. And then use this deburring tool to take any sharp edges off here. I might just run this around these as well just to make sure they're nice and smooth before we try it. Partly to delay trying because I'm scared I've screwed it up. As I suspected, it's not gonna drop straight on. You can see that I need to open up this lug hole just fractionally. But if I do, that one should drop. That one should drop. That one should drop, maybe with a little bit of fettling. That one should drop. And that one's in. That's probably the worst one. Not a million miles away. But yeah, this template's not quite ready for sharing with the world just yet nor for CNC, hence the point of this exercise. So I'm going to go around and scribble on here what needs tweaking before I tweak it. I can always fill holes back with a bit of weld if needs be. But yeah, not perfect. So I've just used a file to slot the hole for the lug very slightly. Still locates rotationally very tightly and we can see where we're going to get that bolt in that one's going to need a little bit of massaging that one's going to need a little bit of massaging these two are going to need a lot of massaging that one's gonna need, those two are gonna need a lot of massaging. So somehow, despite this being about my fourth iteration of this, I've not quite got this right. Question is, can I improve the fit of some of these by rotating it slightly 
and actually just opening out the lug rather than opening out all these holes. So you can see that this one wants to come this way slightly. That one's way off. That one needs to come this way, which a little bit of rotation wouldn't hurt. So I might start actually by opening up this lug hole um, in this direction so the whole plate can rotate a few degrees clockwise and then that should minimize how much these holes need to be opened up and tweaked. Disappointing. I was hoping to have to do less work than this to get this right. I was hoping to be able to share this layout uh, with the community. People like Jamie, who's also looking to use this motor as an upgrade to his. But more work needed. And this is why I want access to a 3D scanner, because I'm clearly not that good at measuring. Quick camera slash phone change, as the other one was running out of battery. Um, and you can see a bit of progress. So we've got two bolts to locate now, just opening up those holes a little bit. That does mean there's a little tiny bit of play in it. Um, but we will try and get rid of that, partly by re-drilling this lug hole once the others are all aligned. Weld that up and re-drill that. Um, and partly just by adding more bolts, we'll have some tension by getting these to fit neatly. So, fingers crossed. There's a bit of play. We'll see what it's like when we've got the others in, of course, when they're all snugged down and talked up as well. A bit more fettling. We're up to four bolts and that play is eliminated. That's going nowhere. So once we add five and six with a bit more filing out around here and around here, that should be good to go. So if you want to see how I'm fettling this, it's with a file that I snapped a long time ago. I think I trod on it because um, I'm messy and I leave things on the floor. Um, and I'm just basically filing a little bit out at a time, checking it coming back, doing it again until the bolt drops in. This is the last one now. There we go. Last bit of fettling done. I've just done these bolts up not with anything serious, actually just with an electric screwdriver and not a very big powerful one. There is absolutely no play whatsoever in that. It's not going anywhere. So while it's not perfect, and I'm disappointed that the pattern wasn't quite right, it shouldn't need much tweaking. The question is, do I try and tweak the CAD and share that with somebody else and let them test it out? Because I'm not drilling another one of these that's taken most of the afternoon. Um, or do I wait until I've got access to a 3D scanner and do it properly? Uh, we'll see how hungry people are for my not quite there template. Anyway, uh, that'll do for this video. Uh, next step for this, I'm going to use this paper as a template and trim out around it. So we've just got this smaller rectangle with space for mounting the um, to the engine mounts basically actually that'll be on the other side of here this side's obviously going to go to the gearbox and on the other side we'll have engine mounts um so i'll get an angle take an angle grinder to this try and keep it nice and neat and tidy uh, and cut that up and then uh, can't really do too much more on the adapter plate until we've got the gearbox off although i could cut the 40 by 40 box section from there but that's not very exciting the next thing you'll probably see on this bit of the project is the coupler um so if i go and grab that a second it's on the floor over here that's from the rear diff that i got with the car the plan is to, um, once I've got the clutch, it's a good point actually, I can't do this until I've got the clutch off the other car either, off the uh, GT. 
but obviously this will mate up to uh, I'll probably trim these down if I need to the clutch center from the BMW will sit on the other end here and there'll be a piece of tube across the whole outside I will trim these off which will be tough because they'll be quite hard um, be one one piece coupler and probably need to cut it down a bit as well actually it's probably too long in fact it is too long um, so cut it down I may actually just cut it off under there that might be easier than trying to trim these splines down um, but we shall see cut it off stick them both in a tube this in the clutch center weld them up uh, and do it all in the lathe so it's all nice and centered and straight and that's that for today thanks for watching um, if you enjoy this sort of stuff uh, me making things badly <laughs> then uh, but certainly DIY EVs and that sort of stuff uh, then please do like and subscribe uh, come and join me on my journey to upgrade my 300 my Z300s uh, and rebody that in the near future uh, and to build my EV GT uh, my winter car with hopefully 100 mile range and a lot more power than my first car um, I'll stick subscribe and playlist links up here and yeah thanks for watching